A uh, few announcements this morning. Um, Greg is going to come up and talk to you very briefly about some good news. Uh, and in his time of travel up forward, up forward, I'll give another announcement. Bob and Connie Hagerman want to thank everyone for their cards and prayers at the passing of Bob's brother, Dick. So thank you to all of you who have encouraged them in this time. And now we're waiting. I have an announcement. We have an announcement. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. A lot of people have noticed the bulletin is a mess today. Oh. Uh, oh well, you got the good copy. I got a good copy. You got the good copy. I got a big copy. Yes. <laughs> um, between the snow and working in the office, just, you know, just flip it around and find the right page. Very good. <laughs> They're all there. They're all there. They're They're right order. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Always, always, always. No, no problem there. Uh, one other announcement is Trinity United Church of Christ in Watson Town will begin Easter egg production tomorrow. Now, they won't have any for sale until the end of the week, but just know that they are going to be out there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. For those of you in TV land, I'm not sure why the video is not coming through, but I'm pretty sure you can hear me. So I will work at that as soon as I get back there. Um, the reason I wanted to come up today was to thank everyone. Um, sometimes when I'm up here doing a temple talk or whatever, you just kind of, you know, I don't know how it's received or, or anything like that. But the other week, it's been three weeks ago now. Um, I was up here and talked about, you know, the church's finances. Um, I guess what I want to say is thank you to everyone because in the last two weeks since that, um, we've uh, had offerings of over eight thousand dollars. So that is some good news, and I want to thank everyone for that. And I will get back to TV land here quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful news. Well, I have another little piece of wonderful news to pony off of that. On Friday, two days ago, there was an, announ an announcement by a Dr. Marty McCary of the Johns Hopkins Hospital and Medical Center, or Medical School, and he must be some kind of a virologist, but he announced that from his statistics, numbers, and figures, that we as a country should be reaching herd immunity to the COVID-19 with all the other pieces and parts and immunizations by the end of April. That is wonderful news if this man is correct. Now, we've heard Greg's temple talk, we've gotten our newsletter, and we see where our church finances are at. We got good news this morning from Greg as far as the giving. So now I want to take this a step further. Now listen carefully. We need to start having conversations about getting this church up and running the way it was before. Now there's no time frame on this, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So we need to start having conversations about our fundraisers, possibly dinners. We want to get our Sunday school started, probably in the fall. If you're interested, see Sharon. I'd like to see an adult Sunday school class come back. So if somebody's interested in that, that's something we can look forward to. Committee meetings. We haven't had committee meetings in a long time. And everything's been okay, but I know that that is part of the life of this church, that we sit down together in fellowship and talk about where we're going as a faith community. The other thing is youth activities. We need to be considering that. There will be a youth gathering coming up again at some point, and there will be kids who will want to go to that. Well, we need to consider them as well. So, we need to start the conversations of getting our church up and running the way it was before. Might be fall, but let's not wait until August to have these conversations. Let's start taking advantage of the time we have to plan that was the other good piece of news I wanted to share with you. I was able to confirm this through multiple sources, so I am presuming it to be accurate information. So, are there any other announcements? It's a good day to start life. We've got sun outside, good news in the, in the church, and now we're going to worship the Lord. All right, if you're able, please rise.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close to Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Reveal what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing blood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow the way of Jesus, and as he lives and restores the world we so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise Abounding, the promised abounding gift of God's grace is for us all. Amen. <clears throat> Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, 
together with his wife and the wives of three sons entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground <clears throat> according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all create creatures that have the breath of life in came the <clears throat> breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut them in. For forty days the flood kept coming on the earth, and, the, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. Every living thing that moved on the land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarmed over the earth and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out, people and animals and the creatures that moved along the ground, and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for a hundred and fifty days. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Fills vacuum bags. 
So the owner did the only thing that she could think to do. She grabbed him up, raced to the bathroom, turned on the faucet, and held Chippy under the running water. <laughs> then, realizing poor little Chippy was soaked and shivering, she did what any good bird owner would do. She reached for the hair dryer and blasted the little guy with hot air. Poor Chippy never knew what hit him. A couple of days after the experience, Chippy's owner was talking to the same person who had called that fateful day. Chippy's owner told her friend what had happened, and she asked how the bird was doing then. She said, well, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits there and stares. When the phone rings, Chippy starts to shiver all over. You can't blame Chippy, though. He had just gone through probably the most horrendous experience of his life. And that's how the storms in life come. Everything seems to be going just fine, and then bam, out of nowhere it hits you. We all face these storms. Some are, by nature, tornadoes, floods, and earthquakes. Some are personal. Illness, disease, death, job loss, and broken relationships. Storms are a part of this life. The right question is not whether they will come or when they will come, because we all know they're coming. The question is, how will we respond? Storms have a way of making us focus on what really matters in life. And we look to our scripture reading from Genesis 7 today. Noah, of all the men on earth at that time, was looked upon by God as being righteous. Noah has done all that God has told him to do, and the storms are coming. Everything was now finally ready, and that's when God told Noah it was time. You are 600 years old. You have spent a long time preparing. The boat is now built. The animals are on board. And now all things are ready. Noah, take your family, all eight of you, and get aboard that ark. Then the storm came, and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. All the underground springs that God had been using to keep everything watered on the earth suddenly erupted. As the rain fell, the floodwaters rose, and along with it, the ark that Noah had built. Put yourself there for a moment. Can you imagine the elation that those folks in the ark must have felt? You see, as the waters rose, they could feel the vessel lift and bounce and bob a bit. And I'm sure they said to themselves, thank God this thing floats. <laughs> As the waters ro rose higher and higher, all life that breathed and lived on dry land was eradicated. All that was left were the eight people and the animals on the ark. And for about five months, the flood waters covered the earth. Now think about that. That's a storm. Noah trusted God. God said, build the boat, and he did. God said, load up the animals, and he did. God said, get on the boat, now. And they did. Then we have this line that shows up. This one sentence in the Bible that moves me deeply every time I read it or hear it. And we fly over it. We miss it. Words, then the Lord shut them in. God Himself closed the door behind them. Can you imagine the tension and stress in this family when they heard that thud, when the door shut tight and sealed, and not a drop of rain had yet fallen? 
All they had was their faith, their hope, and their trust in God. I would think in the immediate aftermath of that thud, it was dark and absolutely silent in the belly of the ark. They didn't know what was ahead of them. All they knew is that God was with them because it was he who had shut them in. If we are to survive the storms that come into our lives, we must learn to trust in God. Notice I said learn. This is a learned trait for us Christians. None of us immediately go from depending on or trusting in ourselves to full-on faith in God in a moment. It is through the trials and the storms in our lives that we learn to trust the Lord, drawing closer and closer A man was out jogging one day, and as he passed a cliff, he got too close and he slipped and fell. He grabbed a hold of a branch on his way over, and now he was stranded. No way up and certainly no way down. And he began to scream, help, help, is there anyone out there that can hear me? And he yelled and he yelled, and he was about to give up when he heard a voice. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I'm down here. I can see you. Are you all right? Yes, but who are you and where are you? I am the Lord. I am everywhere. The Lord? You mean God? That's me. God, help me. And I promise, if you get me down from here, I'll stop sinning. I'll be a real good person. I'll serve you the rest of my life. Easy on the promises, son. First, let's get you down, and then we can discuss the other matters. I'll do anything, Lord. Just tell me what you want me to do, okay? Okay. Let go of the branch. What? I said let go of the branch. Just trust me. Let go. Then the man cried out, Help! Help! Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> Trusting in God can be difficult sometimes. When all the storms are raging, we can be assured that he can rescue us, protect us, and get us through. Noah could have said, Lord, I don't understand why I need this big boat, but I'll trust you and do what you told me. Now think about something else. Can you imagine how the neighborhood must have mocked him. Nobody understood what he was doing. Not even his family. Probably not even Noah for sure. He simply trusted in God and did what God had given him to do, what he had called him to do. And yep, building an ark, that's a ministry. And because he trusted, he and his family were safe in the midst of the storm. The Bible says Noah was a righteous man. Righteous means to be in a right relationship with God. Noah had faith because he had an ongoing dialogue, open communication, a spiritual connection with the Lord. And because of this dynamic, Noah could draw strength and courage to ride out this storm because he was a righteous man in a right relationship. Now notice, he's not sinless, he's not superhuman, he's not flawless, and he's not immortal. But he is in a right relationship. St. John writes in his gospel these words of Jesus. Whoever believes in me is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And this is my proof text. There are no preconditions to righteousness except to believe. We are in right relationship with God, declared righteous 
When we place our faith, hope, trust, and belief in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, who died on the cross for you and for me. That's it. All people have storms in their lives. Christians can ride out these storms and not be overwhelmed because of their relationship to God through Jesus Christ and through the work of the Holy Spirit within us each day. Noah was able to survive the storm because of his trust and faith in God. Now for the last moment, hear me. You and I don't have to be perfect and sinless to be righteous. We just have to believe. Knowing the storms are coming and knowing, trusting and believing that God will get us through. Amen. now join together and confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father of all. of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all we need. Loving God, in Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, you have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and scientists that they may present us with honest solutions. Lord, in your mercy, all your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Lord, in your mercy. 
even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside and tend to those whose lives feel desolate and give healing and strength to all those who suffer. We lift up to you today the needs and concerns of Wanda Groom, Ricky Ann Sturf, David Jacobs, Beth Hudock, Roger Rogenault, Wayne Mingle, Andy Bieber, Darv Kraus, Danny Watson, Marianne Markowitz, Dan Flieger, Dave Kaiser. And now, Lord, we add to this all those needs and concerns on our hearts today. and heal each of these as no other can. Lord, in your mercy. We raise up our joys and celebrations with the birthday today of Grace Swope. She's 29. <laughs> Please bless her richly in this joyous time. Lord, in your mercy. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our I Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord pour out his favor upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.